Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this learning zone in Scottish Business Week 2022. And um, this is steps to building the foundation of a valuable brand. And we'll be getting started very, very shortly. Um, in the meantime, if I could get you to just post a little message into the chat, let me know who you are and what business you're, um, you do. And like I say, we'll be getting started very, very soon. Um, I'll also be sending out a link for today's slides. Um, at the end of today's session as well. So I sh shall see you in around 30 seconds. Okay, fantastic. So um, let's get started. Welcome again. If you've just joined us, you've joined the Learning Zone Steps to Building the Foundation of a Valuable Brand. My name is Jay Taylor. I'll be your presenter today. Um, and can I just give uh, get a quick check? Can anyone, everyone hear me okay? Audio is sounding okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Lovely. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, so let's get started. Um, so this is a learning zone. So this essentially means that we will be um, chatting away for a little while, um, for about 20 minutes. And then towards the end, it's your chance to get some advice, get some um, discussion going around your own brand and um, ask any questions that you might have as well. So first of all, my name is Jay Taylor. I'm a digital marketing consultant and web designer here in Glasgow, right. for a company called TaylorMade Digital that essentially helps people to um, win with their websites and also connect with their customers using really clear and um, direct messaging on said websites. If you'd like to connect with me, then um, the link's on the screen, uh, Linktree, uh, that's my Linktree, um, and I shall also try and get a link that I can post into the chat as well, which I'll get shortly as well. Um, during the Q&A, um, we'll be talking about everything to do with branding, of course, but if you do have any digital marketing questions or web design questions, please do let me know and we'll try and get to them as well. So today's session, like I said, we're going to talk about obviously the steps of building the foundation of a, a valuable brand, and that's going to be a 20 minute talk for myself. Um, and we're going to go through five essential steps for building a valuable brand for any size of business. And then in the um, last half of the, that session, we're also going to go through and talk um, directly to you about your own brand. We're going to have a discussion around that um, and some Q&A time as well, just to make sure you get the most out of today's time. Um, so I hope you've all been enjoying Scottish Business Week so far. Um, and towards the end of the session, I, I believe that you'll be followed up with over email to um, to see how today went overall, but also, also to see how this session went as well. So. Uh, I'm very pleased to be talking about this um, this uh, kind of topic. It's something that I'm really deeply passionate about, and I hope that you'll get a lot from our short time today. Um, okay, uh, Marilyn's saying that she's hearing a bad echo. Um, I'm not sure if that's a problem just for you, Marilyn. I don't think anyone else is, is experiencing that, but um, if it is anyone else, please do let me know, and I'll do my best to um, to fix that for you. Okay, so let's get talking about the foundations of a valuable brand then. So this is, in the time that I've been given, I decided to focus on five key elements that I believe is essential for the um, foundations of any brand, but also when you when your business grows, when your brand grows, um, these five key elements are essential to concentrate on and keep coming back to throughout your time in business to ensure that your, your brand grows and evolves into something that is val a valuable asset for your business. Um, and the five key elements are, know your customer, define your purpose, own a problem, message, messaging with feeling, and finally consistency. And there's also a wee bonus one right at the end, of course. Um, so if you're not familiar with the idea of, of branding or what a brand actually is, um, there is another webinar that, that Business Gateway holds on a regular basis that you're more than welcome to attend. Um, but just a quick um, introduction to it. This is a, a quote from Mr. Bezos, Mr. Amazon guy. Your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. 
And essentially your brand is what your customers think, feel and um, talk about you when you're, of course, not present, when you're when they're in company of their own friends and family. What impression are you giving them on a day to day basis about your business via your brand that is allowing them to say positive or negative things to your friends, uh, to their friends and family, hopefully positive. And of course, if we look at the five essential steps today, I'll hope that everything is nice and positive. Um, going forward. So that's a very, very quick introduction. Like I said, we do have a full um, session on that for the Business Gateway website that you're more than welcome to attend called Building Your Brand and Promotional Graphics. Um, have a look on the Business Gateway website for that. But um, in this session, we're going to concentrate on the five steps. And our first step is essentially the core of any brand, the foundation of any brand. And you've guessed it, it is knowing your customer. Knowing your customer is hugely important. They are the people that keep us in business. They are the people that keep us living the lives that we have. And they are also the people that help us to grow our business in a number of different ways. Um, and we wouldn't expect to be able to grow a brand in the presence of our customers without really knowing them very well. So step one to the essential steps is know your customer. So if you've not, if you're not familiar with um, the idea of a customer persona before then there's a really good resource on HubSpot's website again I shall get you the link for that very shortly and um, HubSpot's website is um, has a, a tool called build your brand persona and essentially what that means is you're taking a look at your most valuable or most preferred customer that you love doing business with every single day not the customers that give you um, the most grief potentially not the customers that um, aren't you know, it doesn't really strike the passion in, in your business that you expected. It's the customers that you love doing business with on a day to day basis. And you're trying to encapsulate an example of that, a semi fictitious idea of that customer in the form of a customer or buyer persona. And essentially what that is, is it's a description of, of them, what they're like, what their values are um, what digital channels they use and a really good source of knowledge for this um, for this by a persona or customer persona is your actual customers. Identify the customers that you really love doing work with. Identify the customers that are your best customers and ask them questions about their challenges before they did started to work with your business or bought from your business. Talk to them about what um, their day looks like in terms of their digital usage. Are they on social media more often? Are they uh, one of these people that's always on their emails like myself? Um, and really get to understand what their problems are and the, the whole idea of problems We'll, we'll come back to in, in detail, but the, the core of, of this step is really knowing your customer as if it's one of your best friends, as if you as if it's one of your closest family members so that you really can start to speak to their goals, to their uh, challenges, their pain points um, and create messaging around what they already like, what they already value in life. And as soon as we've got that, that will form the, f the first foundation of your brand. Because ultimately, like I said, your brand, your customers and the um, opinion and feeling that the customers hold about your business is just so important to building a valuable brand. And it's why we stick and are loyal to um, the larger brands. For example, um, myself, I buy the same brand of um, trainers all year, all year round because I'm loyal to that. I'm loyal to that brand because they, they speak to wow. my own core values and they put out messaging that helps me think about myself in a, in, a, in a kind of different identity in a more sporty identity than perhaps I would like um, or that, that I would like to become. So know your customer is the first step. On to our second step then. So this is something you may have heard of before and it's more one of the more traditional branding um, brand strategy uh, steps when you're building out a brand and that is what is your brand's purpose and essentially what we're asking you here is why are you in business and what may, what aspects of your business are special? So I, in the in the fuller session that we do um, uh, throughout the throughout the months and throughout the year, I ask the question, what is it you do? How is it you do it differently? And why does it uh, why do you do it in that way? And in this in this side of slightly asked uh, ask in a slightly different way, which are what aspects of your business are special? What parts of your business? show that you're a unique business are there any are there any aspects to your business that you deliberately do different from your competitors um and then the, the next question is why do you focus on these aspects to to be different what is the point of being different um in these areas why does it matter to you 
And then also, finally, why wow. does it matter to your audience? I'm guessing for some reason you have created these specialisms within your business to stand out and to appeal to your audience. But why is it you're focusing on these areas that really get clear on why you're focusing on these areas to stand out across all the other things that you could stand out in? And a couple of examples here. So I've got a major, um, a major brand here, Tesla, who's got a very, very succinct and straightforward um, brand purpose. And that is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. I'm very aware that many of the businesses on today aren't as um, as grand and as as massive as Tesla is, um, but so that's why I've, I did a, a second example here, which is of a florist. If you are a florist, then your brand purpose might be to delight our customers' day with seasonal floral arrangements, which are romantic and whimsical, and that could be something that you live by every single day. That is the reason why you are in business, other than to make money for yourself and your family. What other aspects make you special and why do you focus on them aspects? Um, and that's our second step, building a robust and concise brand purpose so that when we approach our messaging, when we approach our marketing, we are coming across in a consistent way and consistency is going to be something that we're going to talk about in our final step. All right, so we have a brand purpose. We understand what, what we're trying to do with, with our business other than just to make money. What difference are we trying to make in our little piece of the world? Next, it's, trying to, it's, it's time to start associating our brands with a core problem that we solve. And this is where the valuable part of, it, of this starts to come into it. When we start to associate our business and brand with a problem that our customers have and reliably and consistently present us the business as a solution to that problem we get known for, for, for solving that problem and the the clearer that we can define the problem and understand and show the empathy of, around what that problem is doing to our customers lives and what the solu our solution can do to help them move into a different part of their life without the problem is a huge huge valuable asset um, a huge, huge valuable asset to the business and to the brand, and actually is one of the core reasons why brands are so, the bigger brands are so valuable. They present their understanding of their customers' problems very clearly, and they help to let their customers imagine what their life would be like after their problem has been solved. And you might be sitting there thinking, well, I, you know, I, I, I sell something that isn't going to change someone's life. That might be correct like a florist, for example, you might not be able to change a customer's life with a bouquet of flowers, but you might be able to help them um, change one of their family members days by having that, that bouquet of flowers. You might be able to help them to come across or help them to be a more loving person by supporting them with a beautiful uh, arrangement of flowers for their mum or for their, for their dad or for their, for their spouse. So that's what we're gonna look at here. So the core questions to ask yourself when it comes to owning a problem, is what does your customer want as it relates to your business? What does your customer want as it relates to your business? So in my example, I'm a web designer and I know that my customers want a website that they can be proud to share. That's my, that's my core customer want. And you might do a lot of different services and that's completely fine, but there will be an overarching high level um, want that all of your customers, um, all of your customers are seeking that you can provide. So try and get a really, really clear answer on what does your customer want as it relates to your business? Is it a fantastically beautiful website that, um, that grows their business? Is it, uh, in the florist example, is it a beautiful yeah. arrangement of flowers that's going to wow their spouse? And the next question to think about is, as it relates to your business also, what overall problem do you solve? What is stopping your customer from getting what they want? So if you are a coach in, if you're a nutritional coach, for example, the customer wants to feel good about their um, about their health and their well-being, the customer problem in that in in that scenario will be would be I don't feel like I'm eating the right things to um, build a healthy life. And then how does that how does that problem make the customer feel? Now this might sound pretty process driven and pretty kind of um, high level to the point where you're not really sure where how you're going to use this, but we will come on to that very shortly. Um, the fundamental part of this is once you know your customer from a customer persona perspective, once you've done that research, finding the overall problem that you solve across your entire business function 
and also um, understanding how that problem makes them feel is really, really important when we try and connect with our customers on our marketing channels. So if you're um, someone who's decided that social media, in particular LinkedIn, for example, for a coach is really yeah. important for your business and you've chosen that as one of your marketing channels, using yeah. your brand's position and brand's purpose, you can start to really resonate with the problems and understand and demonstrate empathy that you understand the problem that, um, that your customers face. But also you can understand and demonstrate empathy about around the problem um, and how it makes them feel as a result of that problem being present in their life. So keep keep these things in mind. When we consistently um, produce messaging that connects our business to owning a problem and really understand, uh, demonstrating an understanding of the problem, positioning our solution will be very, very easy. And that is that is a core aspect of, again, building a valuable brand. We want to connect our business to solving a problem so that when customers have a problem, they know exactly who to come to. We are top of mind. We are right there in front of, in, in, their, in their minds around who should I go to to get support with this? Or who should I go to to buy this for someone else, for myself? So hopefully that makes sense. And if you do have any questions, by the way, please start sending them through into the chat because we're going to be coming on to a discussion um, in around about three or four minutes if I stop rambling. Um, and we've got uh, the last two steps in our plan. So, so far we've already gone through know your problem, uh, sorry, know your customer. Uh, the second step is um, define your brand purpose. The third step is own a problem. And the fourth step is messaging with feeling. So hopefully you've, you've heard me say throughout this presentation so far that whilst all these steps are in isolation, there is an undercurrent of messaging, how we actually start to use our brand in a, per, in a practical way using the three steps that precede this one. And messaging with feeling is all around, uh, all around not just what, uh, what you say, but how you say it. So when you can connect to your customers with the problems that they have and the solution that you have to solve that problem, you can start, uh, once you've got that messaging written down and sorted and you've got your copy essentially done, you need to start working out from my brand, from my business, how do I want to say this? If I was to say two different companies to you right now, you'd, you'd be able to understand that the tone of their business are very, very different. So for example, um, the if, if anyone who knows the beer company Brewdog versus the drinks, can, the drinks company Iron Brew, their tones are very different. Brewdog's very aggressive fairly masculine brew dog uh, um iron brew is very very cheeky it's very um very scottish uh, orientated because it knows its cust uh, iron brew knows its customers and that cheekiness versus aggressive or that playful versus serious is something that we can help uh, we can find to help our business grow too and actually get almost allow our business to take on a personality of its own and again in the larger session that we do for business gateway um, we'll show you how to do that actually in, in all the aspects of brand personality. But the first question is, how do you talk to your customers? Do you, are you in a, in, the, in a medical based or a kind of therapy based world where you need to talk to your customers in a serious but practical way? Or are you in the business of selling um, uh, uh, playground furniture for your back garden and you need to connect to, your, to the parents that you're selling to on a really friendly and fun level? So that's the kind of um, that's the kind of words that we're trying to use to describe our tone. And the second step is what language do you use? Um, you can use m lots of different um, words to say the same thing. And the language that you choose to use will help your customers build an overall trust in your brand if it connects with them, if it connects to the target customer. And that's why knowing your customer is just so important. So to give you a little bit of a hand here, we've got some sliders that you can either screenshot or you can wait until the end and get the slides on this. For your brand voice to describe how you how you talk to your customers in terms of your brand's tone, this can be really helpful to define that. So these are sliders; they're designed to be uh, it's designed to be on a spectrum. And all you're doing here is you're going down this list and saying, "Do does my do I want my brand to be more playful in its tone or more serious?" Again, if you're building um, children's fern children's uh, playground furniture in the back garden, you're going to want to be more playful because that's the kind of um, tone that your business is. If you're talking about serious legal advice, then your 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 tone of voice needs to be serious. It needs to be direct. And again, youthful versus mature for everyone or for the elite, thinking about your, your customer as well. More casual tone or a more formal tone, 
more contemporary or more traditional. So this should give you some pointers on what you can start thinking about in relation to how you say what you want to say when you're messaging and trying to message, uh, trying to connect your customers with feeling rather than just words. And the uh, next, um, next area is your brand voice in relation to your language. So these are descriptors again on how you might define the kind of language, the actual words that you use in your, in your messaging. And these again can be used in a spectrum base um, so that you can try and really, really get down on paper what it is you're trying to, to say to your customer, how you're trying to say it, and also getting across your brand's personality with the words that you use to say it. So it's the actual messaging that you're trying to say, what you're trying to say, it's how you're, how you're saying it in terms of your tone and then how you can differentiate and further um, introduce your brand's personality with the language that you use. So that's how you message with feeling. That's how you try and get your brand's personality really, really present in, in everything that you do in business, how you speak on the phone versus how um, the, the type of uh, text that you put into a social media post. But if you want to go that one step further, if you want to actually connect to your customers, your target customers on a, on a quite a deep level, then this is an, a really quite interesting idea. So I um, recently, if, if, if anyone's read the, the book Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller, I'm, I'm a very big fan of, of um, the guy's work. He always talks about an identity transformation, help your customers see themselves in the future without their problem anymore. What are you take? How are you transforming your your customer from someone who has a problem that's making them feel frustrated, upset, worried, to someone who is confident? Um, so, for example, for a business coach, you might say that um, a, a really good identity transformation for a business coach for their customers would be: you help your customers um, go from a stuck business owner to a confident and successful business leader. And that subtle shift in, in identity transformation really, really helps to connect to the aspirations of your customer. And believe me, a couple of years ago when I heard about all, all of this kind of advice and this, this kind of branding, um, uh, branding tips or you know, the traditional branding um, guidelines when it, when it comes to creating um, a really, really decent, valuable brand, this was the one that I really thought, this is not going to help me actually build a brand. This is, this is not going to be practical enough for me to develop in my small business. I can assure you it absolutely does. Um, and through through working through it and through understanding the deep levels of, of the psychology behind this, you're inviting your customers into a story where they see themselves before as a weak character and they come out of the other side after they've worked with your business as a strong character. So who do you want your customers to, uh, to, um, to become, that should say? And for this one, all you're doing is jotting down I, the feelings that your customers feel and the kind of identity, the identity that they are now, like stuck business owner to, and then the identity that they, they are once they've engaged with your business, whether, whether they've bought your services or your, or your products. Try and help your customer bridge the gap between how they're feeling now and what they feel in the future through their identity, not through just describing them. I hope that makes sense. So what is your customer's identity transformation? Where are they, where are they going from and where are they going to when they work with your business? All right, and the final step that we have today is consistency. And this is obviously a company that you'll recognize, hopefully being um, Scottish, and this is Iron Brew, of course. And this is a really good example of um, brand in action. Consistency is absolutely key for, it can be summed up in one word, and that word is trust. If you met someone at a party for the first time, uh, a house party, and they seemed very charismatic, very caring, they listened to every word that you said, they asked really important questions about what you do, they tried to understand who you were, and then the couple of, a couple of months roll by and you meet that same person out in the street, and you go up to them and you say hi, remember me from the party, and they are completely different character. They're arrogant, they're loud, they're not interested in what you have to say, that's going to make you not trust that person. And it's exactly the same with a brand. A brand, at its core, a brand is a, essentially a personality that has a function of helping you and your business make money. Consistency around that 
is really, really important because we can trust brands that aren't consistent with their delivery of their messaging, of their personality, of um, their, the offers that they produce, the products that they produce, and their understanding of their customers. So when it comes to your um, brand strategy and when it comes to building valuable brands, please know that all four steps previous to this one is irrelevant if you're not consistent with your branding. And that could be as simple as presenting your logo consistently. It could be as simple as making sure that you stick to the right tone when you're creating your social media posts. Or even when you pick up the phone to answer that next sales call, it could be as important, uh, as essential as making sure that you treat your customers with, re with respect on the phone and be understanding of your customers, even if you have difficult customers on that phone. That consistency is absolutely essential. And it's something that, it, it, as, a, as a last takeaway, I hope that that is at least one thing that you can take forward and say that if you've decided to be a playful and friendly brand, be consistently playful and friendly and at least stick to that. And already you'll start to see that customers will start to know you for your problem. They'll start to understand how they can, can communicate to you and they'll understand that you are a business for them based on their values because you found out all about the, them as a customer and you've helped them to Im, Im, improve their lives or transform their, their identity through the work that they do with you all because you've been consistent. Okay, so as a bonus tip, as a bonus step, I should say, these the five that I've already gone through are, are pivotal. They are absolutely core to building a valuable brand. But this is um, a, an extra kind of step to help you to help your brand stand out. So value, uh, you, you can have a valuable brand, but if you're in a industry where there's a lot of different com competitors around you, all with different brands, all with different messaging, all with different angles, the, the bonus step is clarify your brand messaging. Think about your brand in a really simple sense and make it clear and concise whenever you're trying to talk about your brand. So that when next next time someone asks you what is your, what does your business do, you've got a very very clear answer to that to that uh, to clear answer to that question, and it's the same every single time that you say it. Think about your customers first. We we're all here to sell things, whether it be products or services. We're all here to give away things to build trust, whether it be PDFs or guides or samples of our product. But when we're trying to ensure that our customers get that product or receive that service we often use messaging that is business focused i can offer you this where really what we're looking to do is we're looking to shift that around and think about our, talk about our customers problems um prim pr primarily our customers problems how that uh, problem makes a customer feel and how our solution to that problem is going to help them move into a different part of their life without that problem and that's why that last um, bit, of, uh, bit of advice there is obsess over your customers problems. The more you can understand your customers pain points, the more you'll resonate with your target customer. And if your brand messaging, messaging is clear, your brand will stand out because none of your competitors will be paying this much attention to the problems of the customers that essentially pay us to live the life that we live. So that is your final step. And if you want to go further with brand messaging, um, like I said, I'm a big fan of uh, Donald Miller's brand messaging framework. It's called the Story Brand Framework. Um, again, I'll, I'll share this link with you. It'll also be in the slides. Um, this is uh, a link to his, it's a, it's a seven day free trial, I think it is, but seven days is more than enough to build out a messaging framework based on the videos that he has in that, in that um, library. And essentially will guide you through every single step of what you need to consider when creating a single source of truth for your your marketing. Whenever you want to create a social media post or send an, e uh, an uh, email marketing email, you can look at this document that you produce at the end of the course and you can say, right, this is the, these are the parts that I need and put them together to create any form of marketing. Um, it's a really, really great framework. I've, I've been using it for about three years with my clients and every client that I use it with gets really, really clear and um, concise messaging advice and get a lot of clarity from it as a business and a brand. Um, okay, so I'll share that. Uh, I'll share all the links that I um, said I would share very, very shortly. In the meantime, if you want to go further with Business Gateway, of course, head over to the bgateway.com yeah. website. Um, you can also get access to their online tutorials as well as apply for one to one support through your local office and um, through the Digital Boost program as well. And of course, um, that's the online resources area. You can search for something that you're needing support with, but also in the different business stages that you are in at the moment as well. And um, if you're looking to find the webinars that I've referenced in this talk, 
but also further web webinars that can take your business even further. Um, again, you can head over to the webinars and online tutorials section of that as well. So all that say is thank you for joining. Please, please do remember to leave feedback when you get that link into your inbox. Feel free to scan that QR code um, to connect with myself on LinkedIn. Um, I am really, really passionate about branding, really passionate about small businesses developing really, really amazing brands. Um, and it's I could speak for hours and hours and end about this. Um, obviously, by the fact that I've gone 10 minutes over my allotted time. So um, apologies for that. So we're going to move into a Q&A just very shortly. Um, I'm going to give you a two minute break just to kind of digest all of that lovely, amazing knowledge. And we'll come back here in two minutes for a Q&A. And if anyone wants to discuss directly with me, feel free to unmute yourselves and talk to me. Um, please do post in the chat first, just so I know who, who I'm talking to. And we'll get your questions answered in two minutes. OK, then, so does anyone have any questions for me? And um, this is the discussion and Q&A part of our session today. So if you have any questions directly relating to what we've talked about, please do let me know. This is um, where, where it gets good. This is where people can really discuss the nuances of what I've gone through. And um, does anyone have any questions around the specific content we've gone through? Was there any parts that you weren't quite understanding? And um, it's now your time to speak up. Yeah, Cherry, exactly. So the, the brand purpose should be a statement. It should be a statement of um, uh, why why is essentially you're in business aside from making money. Um, and that is uh, could be connected to a kind of deeper values based thing like we're um, we're trying to improve the local community environment. Um, we're trying to uh, make sure that all dogs live a healthy life through healthy foods, something like that. Um, but yeah, it should be something that's short, not necessarily catchy, but something short that you can remember and it should be like a kind of guiding purpose throughout what you do as a business. Um, it's like when someone asks you what you do for a living, you would say, I work as a trainer. Um, but then, then they, would, they, would, they would ask you, why do you do that? And it's the answer that you would give to that kind of question, because I want to help people grow and develop in their professional careers, something like that. Um, but you would do that from a business standpoint. But that's really a really good question. Thank you. Um, OK, Amanda saying, how uh, how do you decide on a company name? That is a great question. So a lot of companies or a lot of businesses go to. Um, go to their own name to start. Off with. So they, they trade under their own name. Um, now, depending on what specific business that you do, I would always say that you can create a catchy um, company name using um, there's like five different categories of, of uh, company names that you can you can use um, to try and make it a little, a little bit more catchy. I would always go for something that is really straight to the point and again bearing in mind the bonus step right at the end. Brands that are clear and have a lot of clarity around what they do will stand out just by default because their competitors won't. So you see a lot of them um, when you look at The Apprentice for example and they come up with the name Infinity yeah. as their team name. Infinity doesn't mean anything to anyone, but if they were to say something like um, uh, healthy, 
healthy dog food solutions or healthy dog foods.com something like that that gets straight to the point and it allows your audience to understand really exactly what you're about before they've even read anything else about you so i'd say if you're looking to go down the route of clarity and making sure you understand what you do before they even engage with any of your messaging choose a company name that is surprisingly simple that's all it needs to be All right, so Carol's asking, um, regarding knowing your customers, would you recommend doing a questionnaire outside a shop where they might frequent? Yes, that would be a good idea. That, that would be called uh, customer research, absolutely. Um, look at your competitors even. So look at your, so a, a, a digital way of doing that would be to go into your competitors um, sort of media accounts and see where, where your competitors are, competitors are seeing the most level of engagement with their um, channels. So if you go into their LinkedIn and they've got 500 followers and every post they they share they share out into the world has got you know 50,000 likes and 300 comments, but you go into their Facebook and it's only got three likes and two comments, you know that their customers are hanging out, they are engaging with the LinkedIn channel. So that's where you would go to to understand their digital channels. There, when it comes to the more personality-led stuff, I usually find talking directly to customers rather than a questionnaire is is super important because people don't really convey emotion or convey any kind of aspect of their personality really over a questionnaire because they're writing it or typing it and usually customers don't put a lot of effort into that but if you stop someone and ask someone a couple of questions two or three questions about um what what do they value in a certain thing um uh what yeah, yeah. what do they value in a, about a certain thing or what do they um what what's their attitudes towards certain certain topics then that's you starting to build a, a clear on yeah. the customer if you don't already have customers, that's a really good point. If you don't really have customers, then you need to probably resort to something like friends and family that you know would be part, in line with your target customer. Your friends and family will be tainted by the fact that they're your friends and family and, and they'll, they'll give you either really super honest advice or they'll give you really reserved advice. But you can still get some overall themes from, um, from, your, uh, from your friends and family. Alternatively, instead of using a questionnaire outside shops where people, where your target customers um, usually go to, actually you doing a bit of research and just saying, hey, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions by standing outside these shops or standing in the area of these shops? That is a, a quite a lot of effort to go through and that can that shows me that you're taking this very seriously, but that is a really great way to understand your, your customer. Um, and there's also loads of resources online that you can use to, to research the kinds of customers that you know that you're trying to get in front of as well. Okay, Yvonne. Um, yes, Yvonne, you've absolutely you, you, you're, you've absolutely nailed it there. Because too many customer, too many businesses are talking about what they offer and not about what their customer needs are and what their customers' problems are. Every business is in business because they solve a problem in some sense. It could be quite, a, it could be a problem that you need to think quite um, strong, uh, quite uh, deeply about. But in the end. We buy things to solve problems, to, to solve a, a um, problem for us, even expensive cars. People that have the money to buy an expensive car, the problem they're solving by buying that expensive car is they want to show that they have money. They want to have that status. That's their problem. How can I show that I have more, more status over, over everyone else or over other people? How can I be more comfortable in the car that I'm buying? These are all problems that an expensive car solves. So no matter what you do, Obsessing about your customers' problems and really relaying that back to them and aligning your business with them is super useful. Um, okay, sorry, I was too busy answering questions there and not enough typing links into the chat box here. So give me two seconds and I shall do that. Okay, so coming your way in the chat just now is a the HubSpot tool that I was telling you about on how to build your customer persona to document your target customer. Here we go, that's that in there. And we also have the link for today's slides, which I'm just preparing. If anyone has any other questions, please do say. If you're building a new brand, for example, or if you're, if you're going through a rebranding exercise, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to 
um, hear your perspective of it. And if I can give you any, any useful bits of advice, I'd be happy to do that as well. Okay. Any other questions for anyone? Uh, also, if you've asked a question during that session and I've missed it, please do let me know and I'll, I'll come back to it. Okay, so incoming is a link to a page that you can use to download today's slides as well. And finally, coming your way is a link for this um, online course on how to go that one step further with your uh, your marketing and your mess uh, brand messaging as well. So that's through a system called Business Made Simple. Um, you can, if you want to, but what I would say is, um, if you're, if you're choosing digital channels, Lorraine's asking a question here. Can you have more than one brand statement? You absolutely can. Um, but what I would, yeah, what I would say is with, when it comes to digital channels that you use, we are, we are suffering. We are all suffering from the affliction of digital overwhelm, which is essentially we are bombarded with messaging and uh, updates left, right, and center from all aspects of our digital um, landscape and as a business if we're trying to use these digital channels to um to grow our business we can't expect our users to really burn too many mental no. calories by understanding multiple statements of purpose and value and really the brand purpose is for your is, is, is for yourself but that brand purpose will come out in your messaging and um, so i would say you can have more than one brand purpose statement I would stick to one. I would find something that is an overarching theme from everything that you do, um, and you'll find one. I, I trust me. I, I run a website agency that does website design, digital marketing strategy, brand messaging strategy, um, training sessions, webinar delivery, all that kind of stuff. And I was still able to find an overarching message that encapsulated all of that. So write down all of your answers and circle the one that you think is is the best one to go with. And again, it's really for internal use. It's really for you to guide you, but this will come out in your messaging um, further out, of, further into your brand strategy for sure. Okay, great. So we're coming up to two o'clock. Um, I can't see anyone else. Um, anyone else in? Oh, I'm getting some now. Good stuff. Yes, Yvonne, I am here for what you've just said. Do you think customer, uh, consumers are moving more and more in the direction of conscious buying based on branding and footprint of a... Okay, so I'm going to read this out, Yvonne, because I think it's really important. Yvonne said, I think that aligning your brand with the environment or its impact on the environment is a crucial point um, in this time of a uh, climate emergency. Do you think consumers are moving more and more in the direction of conscious buying based on the branding and footprint of a product? Meaning, do you think that type of consumer is even larger out there than we think? Are younger generations more environmentally conscious consumers? Um, uh, on a whole, on a broad approach, I think, yes, we are uh, in this country, certainly uh, as um, in Scotland, I should say, moving more and more towards a more environmentally conscious uh, culture. And it's something that I, I love, I am here for, absolutely for. Um, I, what I would say is, really depends on your customer so if you're if you're really taking step one very seriously about knowing your customer you need to check to see if your customers in particular are have a, a um an aggressive standpoint on making sure that they're buying and consuming things that are environmentally friendly or at least environmentally uh, environmentally conscious 
So what I would, my advice to you is broadly, yes, we are seeing that trend, but in terms of your customer base, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. So we need to do a bit of research on that. And we need to look at that and see and understand whether environmentally friendly or uh, being environmentally conscious is actually part of the considerations and values that our customers hold. And that's why that, that building that brand persona is so important. Um, because it might be that we just happen to be in a segment where it's not as um, it's not as uh, front of mind for our customers, in which case we can add it as part of our brand. We can certainly talk about it, but it wouldn't be certainly one of the main messaging points that we would use. And thank you all for your kind messages as well. I really appreciate it. Um, I think, did I share? No, I didn't. So finally, just before everyone disappears today, like I said, um, I'd be really grateful if you could fill out the feedback form when it comes your way. Um, and if you'd like to stay connected with myself over at Taylor Me Digital, that is my link tree. Um, you'll be able to connect with me on LinkedIn there. You'll be able to look at our website as well, of course. Our website is getting relaunched with a brand new brand, which you'll get a preview on um, in the link tree that I sent you, because that's the first place I've actually updated it. Um, and yes, I, I'm, I will be most active on LinkedIn. So I hope to see you all over there um, very, very soon. So we have another 13 minutes left of today's session. I'm very keen to finish on time, um, given that uh, the quest questions have been a bit slow. The questions that have come through have been outstanding, I've got to say. Um, uh, I really appreciate everyone who's contributed there. Um, but if there's any others, please do fire them in. I might have shared the wrong link for the slides. So give me two seconds and I'll share the right one. Never mind, I'll share the direct link to the file. Here we go, here is the direct link, uh, very unglamorous direct link, there we are. Marilyn, I'm starting a new business. Oh. I was just going to call it Coaching with Lynn, is that okay? Um, what kind of coaching do you uh, do, you do Marilyn? Or Lynn, sorry. You might have already said this earlier on, so apologies if you have. Let me just scroll back up. Yes, let me know what kind of coaching you offer. That would be amazing. Okay, lovely. Personal self-esteem. So what I'd say is in, in terms of think about the goal of me saying think about the aim of why I'm saying to be more clear with your brand name and that is to make sure that there's no ambiguity around what we do when a customer comes looking for something like what we can provide so when it comes to your brand name coaching with Lynn is a really good start but it, that could mean PT coaching it could mean business coaching it could be anything so I would just add in self-esteem coaching with Lynn that's all it needs to be um, something nice and personal. If you do want to go a little bit more jazzy with your name, I'm all for jazzy names because that's, you know, think about all the big brands in the world and they've got pretty jazzy or made up names. If you're going to do that, make sure that your tagline defines extremely clearly in, in simple terms what you do. So if you had the name um, uh, Be Bold Coaching with Lynn, your tagline should be Personal Self-Esteem Coaching. So uh, pers yeah, personal self-esteem coaching, something as simple as that. 
It's all about clarity. Okay, so we've got one last minute question. Any recommendations for help in actual affordable web designers who develop the creative ideas incorporating the branding or are most or most of them not, uh, or are most of them that good? Um, so in terms of affordable web designers, I'd say I'd say what define affordable because businesses are at different levels, of course. Um, I'd say that your website is probably one of the most valuable parts of your business. You might not think that if your website isn't working for you right now, but it can be one of the most valuable point, parts of your business. Your, your business should make you money every day, whether it's through brand awareness, through exposure, through actually transacting payments, booking calls, inquiries, whatever. That should be working for you on a daily basis. And if it's not, then something needs to be fixed on it. So I'd say that if you're looking for an affordable website that is just purely for brand presence and to have a digital presence in the world, then um, try doing this yourself because you know your business yourself. And there are loads of builders out there, website yeah. builders out there that are very yeah. easy to use with a little bit of um, a learning curve. And also get in contact with your business gateway um, at local office as well, because they can maybe provide you with some funding to get someone to help you with that as well. That's certainly what I do with, through business gateway. Um, I'm one of their, what they call digital experts. So their funding, and extend to that level of support. However, what I would say is if you're wanting to take your your business website and turn it into something that is genuinely making your your business money, think about how much you would spend on a car and how long you would use a car. You'd probably use a car every single day and you'd probably keep it for about three or four years on average. You'd spend quite a lot of money on that car. Your website will generate money for you. Should generate money for you and should give you that yeah. presence across the, across the internet. So if you're looking for affordable web design, usually getting a website that is working for your business and, and something that complements your business isn't going to be that affordable by you know usual senses. Um, two, three, four thousand pounds, for example, yeah. is is the kind of lower estimate of a very decent designed website that incorporates your brand and understands your business because it takes time to understand and um, for someone to understand your business. But uh, in terms of quality web designers, um, do your research around local areas. Um, I think a lot of people in my position would be saying, oh, that's my business, but I, I'm always a, always around, always thinking about how you can support your local, other local businesses. So look around, speak to other businesses in the area and look at reviews and find a good quality, um, uh, a good quality web designer nearby you for sure. Uh, and is there a social? Is there an association of quality web uh, quality websites? Unfortunately, not. I would love that to be the case, but there isn't. Um, one of the big issues that I have in my business is overcoming that idea that web designers are uh, not overly uh, honest, um, not overly um, forthcoming, transparent, easy to work with, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, Unfortunately, there isn't a band of us that, that do that, that, that does that, but that's a really good idea, actually. OK, so we're coming up to quarter past. Thank you to Carol. Cherry, Marilyn. Uh, Lorraine, Yvonne. Joe, anyone who's posted a question in the past um, half an hour. I've really appreciated it and I've loved answering the, your questions. Um, like I say, if you want to continue the conversation, head over to LinkedIn and connect with me. Um, and aside from that, I'm going to be here for the last remainder of the five minutes. Any last questions, please do let me know. And if I don't see you um, soon, have uh, an amazing rest of the week with um, Scottish Business Week. And I'll maybe see you on one of the future Business Gateway webinars around marketing, branding and website design. And I'll see you shortly.